In this video we're going to talk about the Revelation chapter 12 sign that supposedly occurred on September 23rd of 2017, which is last year at the time of the making of this video. Uh, right now it's June of 2018, and so I, we're looking at this in retrospect. Um, but this is this whole event is something that kind of took YouTube and a lot of the internet by storm last year um, leading up to it, where there was many people who believe that this is going to be an event of very great biblical significance, uh, possibly the rapture, possibly the end of the world, who knows what. Um, but uh, because it seemed that when you read Revelation chapter 12, it seemed to describe what was going on in the heavens and the skies and the astronomy for that date of September 23rd, 2017. So let's go ahead and take a look first at uh, what I want to do is I want to discuss what exactly what's that, was that all about? Why did nothing happen? Was there any significance to it? Is it a failed prophecy? Those are the types of things we're going to look at. So first let's go read the actual verses in the Bible for Revelation chapter 12 and see what they say. Okay, so here we have Revelation chapter 12 in the King James Version, verse 1. And it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and upon her head a, a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew a th the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So that's uh, verses 1 through verses 5, Revelation chapter 12. Now. This very much does appear to match uh, celestial imagery um, when you look at the astronomy and the constellations and so forth. So let's go and take a look at that. And this is for the benefit of those who are not familiar with this. For a lot of other people who've seen these videos before, this is going to be reviewed. But I'll go over this rather quickly. Okay, so let's go to the year uh, 2017. Okay, and we're going to go to uh, obviously September 23rd. All right. And let's see what's going on in the astronomy for that date last year. All right. Normally, the constellation of Leo has nine stars in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. On that date, it has 12 stars in it because you have the wandering stars, the additional stars of Venus, Mars, and Mercury, the planets that come into that constellation on that date. So now we have 12 stars on the crown of the head of the Virgin being Virgo, Virgo the Virgin, okay? She is clothed with the sun because the sun is in the constellation of Virgo. The moon is at her feet, just as it described in the verses we just read. So it appears that we have uh, a celestial event that very much matches what is being described in Revelation chapter 12. But what about the addition of this planet here, Jupiter? Okay, it doesn't seem to mention any other stars. It mentions the sun, it mentions the moon, it mentions the 12 stars in her head, which are normally nine. So you have all the other stars listed, but we don't have a listing for Jupiter. Okay, well, it also says in that verse that she labored to give forth, uh, to give birth. All right, Jupiter, as it's going through its uh, cycle during this time, um, it, it, and it goes through each sign of the zodiac approximately every 12 years. So uh, this is a, 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 for Jupiter to be in Virgo at this time isn't totally rare, but it's about every 12 years that, that Jupiter's in the sign. Okay, so um, this particular time when Jupiter is, is uh, going through its orbital path, when it gets to Virgo, it does a little loop-de-loop -loop around the area of her womb, and then it continues on. And that little loop-de-loop -loop that it does, it's a somewhat rare occurrence, um, that takes about nine months. Okay, so when people, going back to look at the, the uh, verses there um, from Revelation chapter 12, um, and it says that uh, um, she being with child in verse 2, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered, people um, who believe that this uh, is referring to September 23rd of last year, they would take this verse to be talking about Jupiter. Now there's no mention of a star here, but it still is uh, suggesting, based on that, that little loop-de-loop -loop that Jupiter does, that that's referring to the pain of her uh, giving birth. However, I th think that it's possible, because there is no mention of an actual star, that the September 23rd sign doesn't actually, from last year, doesn't actually match up because of the addition of Jupiter. And the reason why is I think there's actually an alternate um, 
uh, celestial event that could be referring to her laboring to give birth. So let me explain what that is. So normally, as I mentioned, the, the sun spends uh, one month in each sign of the zodiac, just like Jupiter spends uh, one year in each sign of the zodiac on average. Now, Virgo is a little bit of a longer constellation. So when the sun enters Virgo towards uh, the head of the Virgin, okay, if the moon passes by while the sun is at the top of Virgo, then there's a good chance that the moon will pass by again when the sun is at the bottom of Virgo. So normally on the lunar solar calendar and in the ancient times, you would determine the month by when the moon passes by the sun, when you see the first sliver of the new moon. That's the start of the month, okay? And so as the sun spends uh, its time in each month, uh, in, in one of the signs of the zodiac, then you usually have one occurrence of a new moon in each sign. Okay, so typically you would have one first day of the month on each sign of the zodiac. Well, in this circumstance, you actually end up with two pass, passing by of, uh, pat, I don't know how you'd refer to it, two first days of the month, if you will, occurring in Virgo. Uh, well, the sun is a Virgo. And so that could be a possible allusion to her laboring to give birth. In other words, laboring to move on to the next month. So if that's the case, uh, and that's, that's the case in 2017, as we see here, um, if that's the reference that's being referred to, then she's still laboring to give birth in 2017, but the omission of Jupiter still stands out, that there would be no mention of Jupiter as the star. So... I could definitely see the, the verses fitting it either way, either with Jupiter um, being referred to, but it, I question that, or with the way that I just mentioned where you have two first days of the month in Virgo when the sun is at the top and then later a month later when it's, the sun's down towards the feet. Um, but the point being is that there's a, definitely a case you could make with the presence of Jupiter that this doesn't match the, the uh, Revelation chapter 12 description. Okay, so that's one possible reason why this sign may have failed or nothing happened on that day. Another possibility is that the sign is actually for events come, yet to come in the near future because, you know, if you're going to put a sign up that said that the bridge is out, you don't put it out, you don't put the sign up after you've come to the end of the bridge. You put it up before you get to the end of the bridge. So if this is an omen or a sign, it could just mean that we're getting pretty close or near to the end times, not that we're actually, something was supposed to happen on that date. So that's another possibility. Um, and just to let you know where I was at, because uh, I was aware of this obviously before that date last year, and I've done some videos on it, and I've also explained to my Bible group, I was basically leaning towards um, that there wouldn't be anything that would occur in this date, but I was about 60-40. Uh, I, I, was, I was like 60-40 that it didn't have biblical significance, significance, but I was also, you know, it did seem like, hey, this there's a lot that could fit to this, you know. So, uh, and that's kind of where I still stand now. I mean, there's still a possibility that this does have some biblical significance to it in Revelation chapter 12. But the reason why then, and the reason why still now, that I lean toward it not having biblical significance is not because of the addition of the Star of Jupiter. Because you could make a case based on, you know, their interpretation that, that it is in a way being referred to there. The reason why I had an issue with it then and now is because of the fact that I believe that the scriptures, when you read it, is referring to a celestial event that occurred 2,000 years ago. Okay? Um, because it discusses in the verse, if you go back and read it, in the verse, it talks about her giving birth to the man-child who's going to rule the nations with the rod of iron, and he's caught up to God and to his throne. Okay, Jesus, who's the man-child, who's going to rule all the nations with the rod of iron, who ascended to the, the heavens and, and, and is seated at the right hand of, of the Father on his throne, that's something that happened 2,000 years ago. Jesus was born 2,000 years ago. Jesus ascended into heaven 2,000 years ago. Okay. Um, that didn't happen last year on September 23rd. So when I read these these verses in, in Genesis uh, Revelation chapter 12, they seem to be or appear to be uh, intermixed with references to events that occurred in the past. So therefore, 
shouldn't we also be looking at astronomy around that time as well to see if it matches up to the other events that are being referred to that would seem to be past events. Now, the reason why I was, you know, saying there still could be biblical significance, the, the minority opinion that I have, and still in a way have, is because I believe that there's a possibility of dual fulfillments. In other words, just because something was fulfilled in the past doesn't mean that there isn't a dual fulfillment that can be applied in some way to the future. I don't think that the birth of the man-child and ascending to heaven, I don't think that really has a dual fulfillment, but there might be some other significant end-time prophetic events in this chapter that have a dual fulfillment. So, having said that, what is the original fulfillment? What's the original astronomy that, that I think this chapter does apply to? And I apologize that you had to wait 10 minutes to get to this part, but I'm going to show you now what I believe is the astronomy for Revelation chapter 12. And I think once I show it to you, you'll see clearly that, yes, this is what Revelation chapter 12 actually was talking about. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Okay, here is uh, September, we'll go around September 1st. Okay, September 1st of 2 BC. All right, and in September 1st of 2 BC, what we see is here's the constellation Leo nine stars okay and then we have three other stars at our head Mars Jupiter and Venus so so that you know we have 12 we have a constellation a, a, a crown of 12 stars upon our head we also have Mercury which is near her head however here's the situation with Mercury um, Mercury is in the process of passing by the Sun and when it passes by the sun, it becomes obscured. Um, you can only see these stars. What happens is you can view these stars, uh, depending on what side of the sun they're on, either right at sunrise or right at sunset, because then they go below the horizon or the sun comes up and obscures the, the sighting. So as Mercury is hidden behind the sun, it wouldn't be included as part of the, the recording of the astronomy. It, it would be... Um, you wouldn't have seen it in the, in the heavens when you're doing your astronomical observations. You could have seen uh, Venus, Jupiter, and Mars, though. Um, and in addition to that, um, we see that the moon around this time is at her feet. Okay, so you got your crown of 12 stars, you got the clothed the sun, you got the moon at her feet. Now, if, if we're going to use the same definition of Jupiter being laboring to give birth, we could possibly apply that to Mercury passing by the sun, too. That might be another instance where it's talking about her laboring to give birth. Um, or another possibility is that the moon passes by Virgo uh, once while, while it's at the top of Virgo. And then if we go ahead 30 days later, while the sun is in Virgo, we get the moon passing by twice. So again, we have this laboring to give birth. That might refer to a, a uh, double bypass of the, the moon to the sun while it's in Virgo, um, which doesn't happen every year. So, so the point being is that there are possible ways to um, look at that those verses and apply them to other dates in history. And that's one of the things that I didn't like that, about a lot of those videos. They would make the case and say, oh, this never occurred before in history, ever before. Well, if you're going to include Jupiter and, and the loop-de-loop -loop and all that kind of stuff, yes, you can make that case. But you're, you're, you're using a very narrow uh, interpretation of those verses to say that they apply for Jupiter. If you don't say they apply to Jupiter, then you could make the case that this has occurred before in history. And, and this is an example right here. This is in 2 BC, which, by the way, going back and looking at those verses, they talk about the woman giving birth to the man-child. Okay, well, what happens around 2 BC? Well, that's around the time Jesus is born. Okay, now, this sign that you see that we just described, it's still a very, very rare sign. As a matter of fact, um, we won't see this sign occur again in the heavens for another 70 years from this date of 2 BC, okay, or, or roughly 70 years. And then you could make a couple cases um, where it kind of maybe happened over the course of the next millennia, but it's still extremely rare. Like um, maybe maybe you could possibly make two or three cases more between over the next 2,000 years that you could say, eh, that might somewhat apply. Because I did find, I went through and I searched and I, I found a couple that were close. But to be spot on like this, the, the 
two, the three dates that I would say that, that really do fit it are this date on 2 BC, another date that occurs in 70 AD, and that should raise some uh, eyebrows right there, and then, of course, September 23rd of last year. So <clears throat> what I want to show you about this, this uh, occurrence of this sign in 2 BC, uh, we have this right now at September 1st, okay? If we move this forward, I want you to watch what happens with these stars here. So we're going to go one, two, I'm sorry, if we move it backwards. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to go about, about there, okay? So you have a con around the 26th, okay? Around the 26th, you have a conjunction of stars. And it's, it's an interesting conjunction because you have, uh, basically you have four stars that are forming this conjunction in their paths where they line up. Um, they're all getting into this plane, uh, of, of this elliptical plane here at the same time. Venus is a little off to the side, but it's still crossing this, this elliptic at the same time as Mercury, Jupiter, and Mars. Okay. And so at I invite you to go look at my video that it, that's entitled Explaining What the Star of Bethlehem Is because this sign is in that video and this conjunction occurs twice two years apart and this in my opinion is the Star of Bethlehem. It's the sign that the wise men saw twice occurring two years apart and the first time they saw it it was shaped like a scepter or a staff and striking the corner of Moab. And when we add the, uh, I'm going to add the ground here so you can kind of see what we're talking about. And again, you should go watch my other video. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to back the time up here a little bit. Oops. So we're going to bring this down to just before dawn when you can actually see these stars before the sunlight obscures them. And so if you're in Jerusalem just before dawn and you see this this symbol here, okay, that looks like a scepter, this is extremely rare. This, this doesn't happen anywhere in history, this, this type of lineup, okay? Uh, and then it happens again where there's a conjunction like this two years later. But what's happening is this forms a scepter or a staff that rises on the horizon right where the corner of the na ancient nation of Moab would have been in ancient times. And this applies to a prophecy about the star rising out of Jacob that strikes the corner of Moab that's described in the Torah. Um, that is, this, in my opinion, the, the uh, star of Bethlehem, okay? Because what's going on in the heavens is at the same time, you've got another wandering star, Saturn, that appears right where Orion is grabbing the heel of the Gemini twins. And that's what Jacob means, is the one who grabs the heel. So you have a star rising out of the ones who's grabbing the heel, rising out of Jacob, okay? And a scepter rising out of Jerusalem, out of Israel, that strikes the corner of Moab. And if you're in Jerusalem on this date, you're going to see the scepter from your perspective. It's going to strike the corner on the horizon where Moab is, which is a little basically corner on the map of that nation where it is on the horizon. So go watch my other video that explains the Star of Bethlehem that gets into that. But my point is, I'll remove the ground here, so let's get it rid of the ground. My point is that this sign occurs on the 26th, okay? So if we move this one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven days, we, we, uh, maybe eight. We'll go, we'll go eight max, okay? Um, you still got the 12 stars at her head, the crown of the 12 stars in Leo. The, the sign below her is uh, Libra, so you got the moon in Libra, which is at her feet. The 12 stars are her head, the moon's at her feet, okay? Uh, she's clothed with the sun. Mercury's obscured, but that could possibly be the laboring to give birth, or it could be the fact that uh, it's a month where the moon passes by the sun twice in Virgo. Okay, either way, it all matches up that. But this date here of September third, okay, that's eight days after the star of Bethlehem sign. Okay, which um, if Jesus is born on the twenty-sixth at the time of the star of Bethlehem. Eight days later would have been the day of his circumcision and the day that he gets prophesied over in the temple as described in the scriptures and so forth. Um, and all these wonderful prophecies are given about him. So, boy, this, this matches up very, very nicely in my opinion. Okay, Because, again, when you go back and look at those verses, all right, it is talking about a woman giving birth. And Jesus was given birth to 
2,000 years ago. And here we have, on what would be his birth date, that sign appearing in the heavens. Okay, So that is the Revelation chapter 12 sign, in my opinion. That's one part of it. Okay, There's a second part, a second appearance of it, which I'm going to show you also. It's very interesting. But here is the woman who's giving birth to the child. Here's the sign that appears in the heaven. Now, um, the rest of the sign, again, you've probably seen some of these Revelation chapter 12 videos before, but here you have um, the the uh, serpent, okay? This is uh, uh, serpents, okay? And it crosses over the uh, Milky Way, its tail does, and the, the verses say that its tail draws a third part of the stars of heaven. You have the uh, Butis, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, but he has the scepter, he's the, the man-child born from the woman who gives birth to the scepter. The serpent has on its head a crown of seven stars, um, you know, it, and seven crowns upon its head, so forth. So, I mean, you've got all the imagery being described, okay? It, it's there in Revelation chapter 12, but it doesn't only occur on September 23rd of last year. That part is incorrect. I, I can show you here, I just showed you here, where it actually occurs on what I believe to be Jesus' birthday and the day that he was circumcised. It's all, uh, you have the, the star of Bethlehem, and then eight days later you have the, the, uh, the Revelation chapter 12 sign. So that seems to be what the verses are talking about. Now, if we continue on with the verses, it also says um, that, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon its head. We showed you the, the constellation of the crowns with the seven stars. And its tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven. That's the Milky Way. okay? And did cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman, just like in the constellations we showed you. Uh, it stood before the woman which is ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, all that imagery is in the stars. Okay, And she brought forth the man-child who is to rule all the nations with the rod of iron. You saw the constellation that alluded to that. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Okay, so this part, her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Okay, that did not happen in 2 BC. Okay, that happened 40 days after, I mean, Jesus was, was uh, crucified on the cross. He rose three days later. Um, then he ascended into heaven uh, after 40 days, okay? That's when he ascended to God and was seated at the right hand of the Father, awaiting for his enemies to be made his footstool, all right? That's a past event as well, but that's an event that did not uh, occur uh, last year on September 23rd. That's an event that happened a couple thousand years ago. Now, Jesus did say that in his day and age, there would be no sign given but the sign of Jonah, okay? For three days and three nights, Jonah was in the belly of the whale, so will three days and three nights and the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth, all right? So I wouldn't and I didn't find and I wouldn't expect to find any constellation signs around the time of the crucifixion or the resurrection because Jesus said as such that there wouldn't be. But there is the Revelation 12 sign at the time of his birth, and there is the Revelation 12 sign roughly 40 years after he started his ministry, which is around the time of 70 AD. So let's show you the other occurrence of the Revelation chapter 12 sign. So let's go to that one. All right, we're going to uh, go to 70 AD. Okay. So if you just bear with me here while I uh, fly by the years. All right. Okay. So 70 AD. So let's uh, move through the signs here, move through the stars. Um, actually, let me, let me zoom in on the sun here so it tracks the sun. Okay, so here we have the sun. Uh, it's coming up and it's entering into Virgo. Okay. So we got Mercury, Jupiter, and Venus are all in Leo, right? Three, three stars on, the, uh, on, her, on her head. Okay, then we have the moon down towards her feet. Now, in this instance, there is no additional star. Okay, and so if you remember when I, I started this video, I talked about the fact that why wasn't there an additional star being referred to? Why is there no uh, uh, Jupiter being referred to as a star? All that's mentioned is that she gives labor, but all the other stars and heavenly bodies are mentioned. Why isn't Jupiter actually listed as a star um, if, if September 23rd of last year is the correct date? On this date, in 70 AD, there is no additional star. Now, she is still giving, <coughs> <coughs> she is still laboring to give birth <coughs> in the sense that the, the sun appears at the top of this sign of Virgo, and so therefore the moon 
starts its new cycle twice in Virgo as, as opposed to once like it would normally. So again, her laboring give to birth, if it's talking about the starting of the new month, that also occurs in 70 AD. <clears throat> so this year is the one year that really, really, really does fit. Uh, and I would say the 2BC one fits well too. I, I don't have any problem with 2BC one. Mercury is obscured by the sun, and that could be the labor that's being referred to. But either way, um, both of these signs fit, and they, they seem to fit with the verses. But what here's what's interesting. Okay, so as the moon passes by, um, wait, whoops. Well, this is this is before midnight. Okay. So it, the moon is just passing by the sun here. This is uh, April, or I mean August twenty fourth. Okay, so the moon is passing by the sun. This is day one of the new month, and when the sun is in Virgo, that's the the Hebrew month of Elul. Normally, there's leap months that kind of shift this a little bit, but normally this is the month of Elul. All right. So as the sun passes by, this is day one. We're gonna go to day eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, you still got three stars on her head. You still have her clothed with the sun, and the moon. It's a little further down, but it's still below her feet. Okay, it's talking about this rough time frame. Basically, what's saying is the early part of a lull. Okay, so here's here's my point with this. This day here, August thirty first of seventy A.D. This is the day, the very day, that Jerusalem came to an end in 70 AD. This isn't the day the temple was destroyed, because the temple was destroyed a little bit earlier. But all the residents of Jerusalem were still held up in the city of Jerusalem as the Roman armies were surrounded it. The final day of that battle for Jerusalem, the end of that siege, was the 8th of Elul. And this is described in, in that date is given in, uh, by Josephus. Okay, in his history, in his uh, historical account of that of the war that uh, culminated in set with the temple being destroyed in 70 A.D., so the eighth of Elul is the day which Jerusalem is officially finally destroyed and wiped out by the Roman armies. It is the end of that siege. It is a day of mass slaughter, a horrible day where millions of people died. Basically, they they came in with with like batting rams, they broke down the siege walls and they entered the city of Jerusalem and they just went through and slaughtered everybody. And whoever could, they rushed through the where the walls were breached and they went into the, the valley surrounding Jerusalem like multitudes in the Valley of Decision kind of thing. And they ran for their lives. And they, they weren't, and, and they had a short period of time to just get out of there because the Romans were slaughtering everybody. So you don't, you don't go back for your cloak. If you're on the roof uh, hiding, you don't come back down because that is the day you're supposed to flee into the foothills, okay? So that occurred on the 8th of Elul. And what's going on in the heavens at that time? This sign, this Revelation chapter 12 sign, okay? So that, in my opinion, Revelation was a warning and an allusion to what was going to happen on the 8th of Elul, and it was telling people when this disastrous event would occur, this prophetic event that Jesus had forewarned and talked about, saying when you see the abomination of desolation, we see Jerusalem surrounded by armies and so forth. So this is what Revelation chapter 12 is, is it's giving a warning to that generation, for those who have ears to hear, when the final day of destruction was going to come, that final judgment day. And it happens on this day when this sign appears in the heavens. Okay, And they had a little bit of warning. I mean, you know, the, the moon is still at the feet. It's it's basically kind of giving you the rough time frame when this occurs, right? So you basically know, you know, keep your eyes open. We're, we're basically, this is it, you know, if you see this event in the heavens. But this sign, again, happens at the time of Jesus' birth. It happens on the day that Jerusalem is destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. And it doesn't happen, uh, again, really well until September 23rd of last year. There are a couple other times in history where you can kind of see this match up a little bit um, around like the 1400s and, and so forth. Um, but it's not it's not perfect. It's not like, you know, even in this case, you know, the, the, the moon being at her feet, um, you know, it's it's getting a little further down there. But it's still it, to me, it's like they were they were talking about the time frame that this would happen. It doesn't have to be like the exact day. But the, the point is, 
this happens when Jerusalem gets destroyed. Okay. <clears throat> so, does that mean that September 23rd of last year was a failed failed prophecy or a failed sign? Okay. Well, I don't think that Revelation chapter 12 specifically only was referring to September 23rd of last year. I definitely think that Revelation chapter 12 was talking about the day Jerusalem was destroyed in 7 AD and also about the time that Jesus was born because those are the two other dates that you clearly see this sign. But I also believe in the possibilities of dual fulfillments. Okay, So that's why even though I thought then and I still think now that there's probably probably more likely nothing to that sign on September 23rd last year as opposed to not, but I still have a minority opinion that there could be something to it because I do believe in the concept of dual fulfillments. And I do believe that there's a possibility that that's more of a signpost or a warning of things that are going to happen soon in our lifetime. Maybe days, maybe months, maybe years, maybe decades, but not centuries in my opinion. Okay. So, um, but having said that, what I do think is interesting is that the two times that those signs really occurred clearly in the past, they were attached to significant events that happened around that time. The birth of Jesus and the destruction of Jerusalem on the 8th of Elul. Okay. Nothing really happened of significance last year, at least that we know of, on September 23rd, 2017. So for that reason, I'm still more leaning towards that there really is no biblical significance for all the reasons I've stated. I won't completely say outright that it's not because I think there are cases it could still be made that there has some future you know significance to it but um, I I think if anything it's it's a secondary sign and it's not what Revelation chapter 12 was really referring to what I believe Revelation chapter 12 mainly was referring to was 70 AD and the birth of Jesus in 2 BC so I wanted to do this video because I think a lot of people um, when, when things like that happen, you know, you got the Mayan calendar in 2012 and, you know, the people come out like books, 84 reasons why the world is going to end in 1984 was another famous one. I mean, there's all these instances where people make predictions, they make dates. <coughs> and when those dates don't come to pass, it doesn't really waver the faith of those who are solid in their conviction. They might come to the conclusion that maybe they got their eschatology wrong, you know, if they believe in a certain date and then it failed them. Um, but it does have the possibility of hurting those that are weak in the faith. Those that are kind of on the fence and they think, oh, this might be real. And then like, they kind of like get all excited or interested about, it, and then all of a sudden it, nothing happens. And then they, they begin to doubt, you know, if they're, if they're weak in the faith, it's, it's those people that when you make predictions that I'm most concerned about. And so part of the reason why I wanted to make this video is to show that, um, that, the, when you're talking about specific vi Bible verses, um, there is a fulfillment of those verses. Okay, It doesn't necessarily mean that it's applying to last year. It, that can be a mistranslation or a misinterpretation, but it doesn't negate the truthfulness of the Bible. So the reason I want to show this video is to show an example of where those, those verses were fulfilled in an attempt to hopefully restore faith. <coughs> excuse me, either, either strengthen or restore the faith of those who were possibly damaged by that whole event last year where people were saying, oh, this is it, this is the rapture, this is the end of the world, etc. Okay. Just to show that the Bible is true. And I watch my other videos and you'll see pl plenty of other examples, I believe, that show that the Bible is true as well. So hopefully um, hopefully your, your faith as well was strengthened by watching this. And uh, if you don't agree with it or if you have critiques, please leave comments below. I'm more than happy to entertain them as well, as long as they're polite. Um, and, uh, you know, I appreciate you watching the video, and I hope to see you in future videos as well. Uh, but again, uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I appreciate your time. And uh, God bless, and remember this, that regardless of whatever failed prophecy comes to pass, the fact remains that man's interpretation fails, but God wor God's word is eternal, and Jesus will return, and he is coming very soon. So... I thank you for watching the video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.